everybody, Christine Williams here, owner of Accredited Real Estate Institute, owner, instructor, presenter, author, actually, because I do write uh, some of the courses and other materials. In any event, it's been a hot minute. I promised you guys here that I would uh, provide uh, ongoing training videos. So my deepest, sincerest apologies. I um, the train left the tracks without me earlier this year. 2021 has been a wild ride and uh, I've been right along with it. For those of you that don't know, not only do I train and teach and present real estate courses, I'm still a full-time realtor. So, oh my goodness, even though I work by referral only, it's been crazy train, right? For those of you in the trenches, you know what I'm talking about. So first of all, let me check on my peeps. How's everybody doing? For those of you that don't follow me on Facebook, on my personal page, I posted last week, just you know, a little check-in, checking in on all my real estate folks. Um, everybody doing okay? We've survived four months of this, whatever, 2021 real estate, whatever we're gonna um, call this world. Um, but just checking in, asking if you need love, if you need to cry, if you need tequila. And it was a joke, folks, I'm not condoning alcohol. To, um, to help you cope with life in any way, shape, or form. It's a joke, but um, in any event, just checking in. I'm here to take a few minutes to discuss some of the wild things we're dealing with in 2021 as Christine, owner of Accredited Real Estate Institute. So let's, let's do it. So a couple um, topics and we could, you know, gosh, have full on training sessions on each of these. So this probably will be somewhat of a long video, but I'll try to just touch on them briefly. We'll start with escalatory clauses. So they're a very popular tool to use in multiple offer situations these days in many parts of the country. And full um, caveat here, of course, full disclosure is remember, I'm in Florida, well-versed in Florida laws and statutes and everything going on here. So I um, cannot speak specifically to whatever state you're in and what your rules are. It is my understanding that escalatory clauses are not legal in all states. So that being said, you may not um, even know what I'm talking about. So an escalatory clause is a tool, like I said, that is used most often in multiple offer situations. So let's just use a quick example. Let's say a house is listed at $280,000. And in today's world, we know most homes, regardless of which part of the country you're in, because of our incredible lack of inventory and all the people migrating out of the states they're in, um, there's not enough homes for the people, period, okay? Real estate supply and demand. So this uh, escalatory clause is, let's say that you're a buyer and you have become aware that the house they're in love with already has 10 offers on the table. So they're, they're totally fine making an offer for $300,000, knowing that it's listed at 280. Um, they may or may not uh, be concerned about the appraisal. That's between you and them. That's a topic for another day. But they're going to make an offer of 300 on this house at 280, knowing they've got to beat out 10 other people so far. And gosh, only knows what's coming in in the next couple of hours. So an escalatory clause is a form that you can use that says, hey, we're offering you 300, Mr. and Mrs. Seller, or Mr. and Mrs. Seller, or Miss Seller or wh whomever owns the house, right? Let's not get into that kind of silly semantics either. So um, in any event, I'm saying, however, if that's not high enough for me to get the house, then I'll go up another $10,000 if um, 310 is gonna beat out the highest bid. And then it goes up um, in increments of whatever the buyer determines, a thousand bucks, 10,000 bucks, whatever, up to their threshold. So for example, let's say this buyer has agreed to increase their offer price 10, 000, incre in increments of $10,000 up to 350. So remember the house is listed at 280. So they're gonna go like way over. Here's my personal concern with escalatory clauses. How do you know what the actual bids are on the other houses? That's confidential information. In no state am I aware where you're allowed to know what the other offers are, right? So. All that seller sees is your buyer is offering 300, but that's kind of the starting point. But they're saying, hey, if we have to, we'll give you 350. So the seller knows that. So in any event, how do you know that the seller and the listing agent are being ethical and that your buyer really needs to go up to 350? 
The truth is you don't. Unfortunately, you don't. So that's my concern. You are exposing um, everything, your, 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 your buyer's whole gameplay, right? So I just, I'm not a fan of them. People use them, people win with them. In Florida, they're legal. So all I'm gonna say is it's not a tool that I like. I think it's causing a lot of strife. It's causing a lot of um, distrust among agents. It's causing a lot of tears for buyers and agents as well. So in any event, just um, use caution. Um, definitely make sure you understand what your escalatory um, addendum in your area says, the laws regarding them. For example, I did read an article from Florida Realtors today. I don't remember the author, sorry about that. And it went through the pros and cons. So I would love to refer you if you are a Florida Realtor to go find that article. First of all, and remember another resource we have and probably most states have with your state associations, we have access to um, a free legal hotline. We have attorneys um, on hand to answer questions like that. Obviously you'd wanna to go to your broker or your coach or whomever is well-schooled in your customary escalatory clause. So again, my personal take on that is I think they're a hot mess. So if you're going to use them, A, be sure you know what they are. And the other caveat to this is it's, it's a gamble. You don't know if the seller is going to tell you the truth or not. And what the article, um, it made up several good points, but one being, remember, a seller does not have to respond to an offer. No response is a response. So that seller is not required to counter um, the buyer's escalatory clause or accept it, even if it's the highest bid. So let's move on from that. So while we're talking about buyers still and what a horrible, horribly challenging, let's say, market for buyers, because I thankfully have several on contract. Um, we'll talk about that in a minute as well. But be sure in this day and age, you are having real life down to earth conversations with buyers about markets. I always um, supply statistics. Um, there's a monthly report that comes out through my local board association. I'm, sh I'm not positive, but I would be willing to bet almost every one of you has the same thing in your area as well. You just have to know where to find it. Um, so I send that information out. I let them know the percentage of homes selling over asking price. I let them know um, that it's customary to offer list price or higher. And I set them up for that um, before we ever start looking. And I let them know, listen, it's no joke. The headlines that you see are actually real news these days regarding the shortage of homes available for buyers. And then if you need to, or probably best practice anyway, right, go and send them links to some of the local housing market articles and your, um, your local news um, feeds. So whether that's social media and or your local association or your state association sh should publish real numbers as well as news channels. So give them the facts. So you need to have a very frank and sincere conversation, most of us in most markets in 2021, regarding the fact that, the, that they can't play. We're not offering um, you know, well below asking price. We're not playing those games. It's, it's, make, it's making us all look bad. It's a waste of time for everybody. And uh, you, you know, you're not condoning necessarily that they go over asking price, but you have to let them know if this is the house that they want or when they find the one they want, that's the way it's probably gonna be played out. So you need to have that discussion and maybe 2021 is not the year for them to buy a house. So on that note, you know, of course, the other thing is people keep thinking we're gonna have a little crash. I'm not an economist, so I'm not here to predict the future. Don't have a crystal ball. I'm intuitive, but I'm not, a, um, I'm not telepathic. So can't tell you what's gonna happen. All I know is I subscribe to a lot of our industry news feeds from around the country. Everything I'm seeing is that we're in this tough position, my realtor colleagues, um, for a year and a half, two years. Things aren't going to change as far as inventory issues. Uh, however, you know, things may slow down a little bit as far as like, for instance, we've seen what 10% appreciation in a lot of areas. I've literally seen homes that have gained $100,000 in equity um, over the past year in the North Florida area that I'm in, that's no exaggeration. So they're saying that's gonna slow down a little bit and that's okay. We can't continue like this. 
but they're saying as far as um, foreclosures and short sales and fallouts of that nature like we had from the recession, what I'm reading is that's not the case. This isn't that kind of market. Buyers don't need to be biting their teeth, waiting for the deal because it's not going to happen. What is going to happen is interest rates are low. So while prices continue to rise right now, it's, it's squeezing people out of the market. Borrowing money is still cheap eventually the feds will raise the interest rate. That's gonna squeeze people even further. So if they really wanna buy a house, they need to bite the bullet and, and do what they can to get a house now because it's probably still going to end up more expensive in the future. Just my take, let's see what happens. So as you're working with buyers, um, one of my passions, as many of you know, is new construction. That's one of the classes that I wrote and I can teach any of you in Florida for four hours of CE credits, by the way. I also work for Builder part-time in addition to, uh, you know, the general resale real estate that I do. So new construction is an option that you probably should offer if it's a lot in your area. You should talk to your buyers about that as well. Completely different process. So before you dive into that, make sure you know what the process is. Just want to touch on a few things going on on that side of the industry because, again, um, I'm witnessing that firsthand, living that firsthand, as well as what we do here on the resale side. So the builders are not getting greedy people. Yes, there are some completely um, slashing the commission that they're offering to us. But remember, there is no um, customary commission. We can't even have that conversation. We're not having that conversation today. Um, a builder is a seller. At the end of the day, they can offer you whatever compensation they want to in the story. What you're gonna make on that sale should not be a factor in you selling a home. Okay, if the, building a home or building a buyer, builder's inventory home is the best option for your buyer, then suck it up, buttercup. That's the house you need to help your buyer get into. So it has, should not be contingent on your commission. So are there builders doing some kind of nasty things to squeeze realtors out? Yes, I will acknowledge that. However, take yourself out of the equation. What's best for the buyer? Okay, so on that note, builders are not being greedy. Builders are getting cussed out literally by you guys, realtors, some of you. They're getting cussed out by uh, the buyers who um, have been cooped up in some other state, not on here in Florida, and they're just, they're nasty. I'm just gonna tell you, because I'm witnessing it. So we have got to learn to um, go back to the ABCs of human nature, kindness and respect and patience, people. Builders are not purposely holding up homes they cannot get windows, they cannot get lumber, they cannot get the vendors to come out on site because they're booked up on other jobs. There is again, a supply chain issue. There is a human shortage issue. There's an issue, there's a big issue. Um, the pandemic created all kinds of problems. And again, just like with resale, it doesn't look to clear up anytime soon. Everybody's backlogged. So stop yelling at the builders. Stop posting nasty things on social media about builders, guys. You're hurting my heart. You're hurting the builders. You're hurting your own reputation by sounding like a negative Millie all day long. Stop. But new construction should be an option for your buyers these days in most markets. So I just want you to consider that. If that's something you want to talk about or if you have some influence in your area of Florida, and you think that it would benefit other members in your area for me to teach my course, reach out to me privately. I'm not having a, a commercial here. So last and not least, I wanna talk about um, something that is getting on my nerves in 2021. How many times have you guys as realtors um, heard or been told to your face, oh my gosh, it must be so great to be in real estate right now. You're probably making tons of money. I want to knock their teeth out when I hear that, right? You too? So no, guys, if you're not, if you've never been commission sales, no, we're not making tons of money. We're running around like little rabbits all day long. We're making appointments to show homes. We are scheduling. I literally got a phone call for one. Um, 15 minutes out, my buyer and not been looking for homes for two years because the pandemic had her lose her, or she lost her job right before the pandemic and then psh, the world crashed. So she's just now at a place where she's ready to buy again. I was so excited. She sent me something. Driving down the road, get the phone call. 
just went under contract. We were 16 minutes out from our appointment time, my friends. That's what real estate in 2021 is all about. Or we talked about the multiple offers. I have personally written, um, I think, seven offers for a lady. And we've actually become friends, love her to death. So I'm not going to go and give a bunch of you know personal info here. But we have written, I think, no less than seven offers on seven different homes because she's competing and she's doing everything right. She's putting in some, some very um, uh, solid terms and um, waiving a lot of things and doing what's you know what people are doing these days to win the bidding war. There's just too many other people doing more than she is. So we are working our tush off, right? Writing a bunch of offers, showing homes. Um, being the emotional punching bag for the buyers and their families that are frustrated, um, crying with them if, if you know if, if it comes to that sometimes, crying with each other, and uh, it, it's tough. It's tough, guys. The other thing is, there are so many realtors. We are, I think, we're the number one um, professional association group in the country right now. And in case you didn't know, we're a big lobbying group. So we're not going to have that conversation either, but that's what we are. We're a big lobbying group. So um, anyway, there are, uh, gosh, I don't want to quote this wrong. I'm going to say 1.3 million realtor members across the country. I may be incredibly wrong on that. Somebody wants to correct me on that later. That's fine. But in any event, I do know about my local area. We have, um, it's close to, if not exceeding 11,000 Realtor members these days, meaning they have paid their dues. Um, they are allowed, they are a member of the National Association of Realtors, so they are you know their license is active. And yet, I looked this morning for in my local MLS system for homes, townhomes, and, and condos. I used those three categories. So, in other words, I didn't count um, quadruplexes and, and, and land, raw land, and, and boat slips. So, homes, townhomes, and condos. There were 2,099 active listings today, homes without a contract. Remember, I just told you we have 11,000 realtors. So do the math. 11,000 divided by 2099, let's just say 2,000. There's a whole lot of realtors out there that aren't writing a sale. Maybe they're working with the buyers like I have and they're writing those multiple offers, but they're not winning the bids. So for those of you in the public watching this, please quit being envious of your realtor friends thinking we're making boatloads of money. We're working probably harder than you are. I'm just going to be honest if you have a salaried position um, and we're not getting paid. So just be cognizant um, of your, your envy and your misperceptions about the real estate industry because we are out here in the trenches. I am calling it a war zone because again, emotions are high, people are being nasty with each other. So just be aware of, of the facts and what's going on. It's really, really hard to be a realtor in 2021. I'm not discouraging anybody. I just, I speak real people. So anyway, I just wanted to hop on again real quick and uh, talk about some current issues that we're all facing here in 2021. Again, Christine Williams, owner of Accredited Real Estate Institute, yes, you can find my school on the Department of Business and Professional Regulation. There's a list of um, course providers. Um, if you need to reach out to me, I will, on a subsequent screen, give my email and phone number. And um, anyway, I hope everybody's hanging in there. And for those of you that are my realtor colleagues, I would love to um, get a referral from you or send one to you or um, teach a class in your area. So hang in there, guys. I'll be back soon.